Hello everyone and welcome to Self Love You. I am Jenna Ryan and today I have a great topic for you. We're going to talk about how to stay no contact with the narcissist. I have a lot of people that write that in the comments. They're like, or sending me emails, Jenna, I'm having trouble. How can I go no contact and stay no contact? Because as we all know, the narcissist never wants closure. That's very well documented. The, the narcissist does not want closure because the narcissist does, doesn't care. They want you as fuel. They want to keep you around for as long as possible. You can do anything you want to the narcissist. They will never discard you. Well, they may discard you, but they're going to come back. They're always going to want to come back, generally speaking, because they want to keep that supply, that fuel supply going. So they're not going to say goodbye to you. So you have to be the one who's strong. You have to be the one that has closure within your own heart. And you have to be the one that goes no contact or gray rock or low contact. If it is a relationship and you do not have children and it's a romantic relationship and you can go no contact, that is the first desired method. It is my opinion that if there are psychologists out there I don't care if they have a doctor's degree, doctorate. I don't care if they're a PhD. I don't care if they are the president of the United States. If they tell you that going no contact is not healthy or that it's not the best idea, then you need to take a really closer look at that person who's advising you because there's no other way to go with a narcissist than no contact if possible. If someone's telling you not to go no contact with a narcissist, I'd be like, really? Hmm. I would wonder if that person is a narcissist. Because a narcissist doesn't want to tell everybody how to protect themselves. The narcissist wants you to stay in a place of the bloodletting where you're being hurt. And, and they, they don't want you to be, you know, free from a narcissist. So I'm not saying they're a narcissist, but I would really look more closely if somebody's telling me not to go no contact with the narcissist. Anyway, so how do you stay no contact? Well, there's a problem in the narcissist abuse cycle. If you're someone who is with a narcissist, there could be something in your past that is attracting you to someone who is unhealthy, who's exploited, who is using you, and who is causing a lot of drama in your life and abusing you. So if that is the case, then you really have some work to do. You have some inner work that you need to do to get to a place so that you can go no contact. If you're just now starting out on finding out what narcissists are, and you're just now learning about narcissist personality disorder, and you're just now learning that there are people out there with no empathy and who have pathological envy, then you may find it hard to go no contact. You may have feelings still left over for the narcissist. You may be trauma bonded. You may have Stockholm Syndrome because of the intermittent reinforcement of the narcissist. The narcissist one minute is nice, one minute is rude, one minute is evil, one minute is devaluing you. You may feel so less than that you need this narcissist in your life to feel whole and complete. I have been there and I know how it feels and it's not a very fun place to be. One of the best places to be, though, is to be able to walk away when you see a narcissist for who he is. You can still be fooled even if you are able to go no contact. The most important thing is that whenever you notice that you're dealing with someone who has no empathy, who has seething envy, who is abusing you, that you know how to walk away that you're not going back to the betrayal source, that you're not returning again and again to someone who is harming you in any way, that you are setting yourself free, that you're protecting yourself and loving yourself and doing what is necessary to get the healing that you need so that you can wake up from the fog and say, oh my gosh, I do not want to be around someone who is treating me in this poor fashion. I deserve more than that. I'm worth more than that. I matter. My feelings matter. My needs matter. I want more for myself, more for my life. And I'm going to shut the door on this narcissist and I'm not even going to think twice about it. Now, I might think 
twice. I might think about the narcissist, but then I'm going to realize that the narcissist wears masks and the person that I was in love with is never coming back. That is a fantasy. That is an illusion that the narcissist created in order to draw me in and get me to a place so that they could take advantage of my heart, my empathy, my love, my affection, my adoration, my you know, me being less than, feeling less than, giving them all of the love I have and not taking anything for myself. That's what the narcissist wants to do is get you to a place to where you don't have any control over seeing them, where they can go off with their harem. They can go off and, and sleep with other men. They can go off and sleep with other women. They can go off and then they can call you. And then anytime they drop a drop of a hat, you're right there, desperate for them. That's how they want you because it builds their ego and makes them feel more important. Well, the key is, is to cut off the fuel source, cut off your value, cut off your focus, cut off your energy, cut off your attention to that, that void because that's what they are. They're a void. You're not going to get back what you put in to a narcissist. They're just going to take it and run. And so what you've got to do is take yours and run. So if you're through with the love bombing stage and they've love bombed you and they've got you to a position and they think I've got you where I want you and now I'm going to eat you, you have to just be like, uh-uh, you do not have me where you want me. And you don't even tell them because speaking to a narcissist is absolutely useless. It's worthless. Any word that comes out of your mouth, the narcissist is not worth one word. They're not worth it because... They're not real. They're not human. They're not, I mean, they may be human, but they're not like, they don't think like we do. And so you have to understand that they are thinking in a way that is not healthy and they're, it's just not even worth it to speak to them. So you have to go no contact and you have to talk to your girlfriends or your guy friends or your therapist or your counselor or watch YouTube videos and just face the facts. Take the hit. Understand. You know what? I, I, I'm with someone who is just simply incapable of loving me the way I deserve to be loved. And I, I am somebody and I deserve to be treated correctly. I deserve to be treated well. And I'm going to shut the door on this person who has shown me their true colors. I see who they really are. And I'm going to walk out the door. You just can tell when you're dealing with, when, when, you, when, they, when the mask comes off and they begin to devalue you and they begin to insult you and they begin to flaunt their new supply to you. They begin to triangulate you. They begin to say things that are very, very hurtful to you, attack your physical body, attack anything about you and put you down. Then you know you are dealing with the drama of a narcissist and you've got to close that door so that you can heal. And no contact is the only way. Don't let anybody tell you not to go no contact. If they're telling you that, they do not know what narcissist abuse really is or they're a narcissist. Either they don't get narcissism abuse, they haven't ever been abused because you have to be a certain person with a certain amount of empathy to understand what a narcissist is in the first place. So if somebody's telling you not to go no contact, my first, my first impression if somebody starts saying, there's no such thing as narcissism or everybody's a narcissist or anything like that, I immediately think to myself, is this person a narcissist? Am I dealing with a mask? Because only a narcissist would want to devalue a narcissist. You know, would not want me to know how to protect myself. That's like saying, don't worry, it's just a robber with a gun. Don't worry about it. They just let him come on in. You know, that's not a good idea. You've got to protect yourself. You, If someone's telling you that, they're either unaware, they don't, they have a blind spot, they don't know what narcissists are, and they think that there's no such thing as the pathology of psychopathy, and they didn't go to school or didn't pay attention that day when they were dealing with people that are um, unempathetic and have issues, or they want to make their own rules up or they're an enabler or they don't care. I don't know. But anybody that tells you not to go no contact, I would be really looking, checking under the hood. 
I think it's important you don't just rush and think that everybody's a narcissist because, you know, everybody's not. There's only a few. Well, there's a lot, but there's a lot of sweet people out there too. And you just have to be in a position to where your heart is open to sweet people. And you can't get there if you're tangoing with a narcissist. You've got to go no contact, which means you don't pick up the phone, you don't care what they're doing, you don't go to their social media, you do not text back with them, you do not accept booty calls, you do not, um, you don't even allow your friends, like if you have friends that are coming over and talking nice about them and trying to bring you back into the feelings of love and longing, then you need to shut that shut that off for a while too or let them know, no, we're not going there. We're not even going to call this person by their name. We're going to, you know, really fo keep the focus on yourself. Going no contact is about closing the energy vein, closing the energy, closing the energy and keeping the focus on yourself, focusing on your own healing, focusing on your own feelings, focusing on where you went wrong. How did you let this person into your life? What were the red flags that you should have noticed? So one of the most important things I'm going to tell you now, it's, it, we're, we're getting towards the end of the video, and now I'm going to tell you. One of the most important things for staying no contact is doing the inner work. That means a lot of times we are still connected to the narcissist because we have inner wounds that are connected to a narcissist from our past, maybe an abusive parent somewhere along the way. And it's usually, you know, caretakers that we need to grieve and mourn. And that's why I do videos called Grieving Your Losses and How to Feel Your Feelings. And I do videos other than videos just on narcissism because it's important to heal your inner self. It's important to get the healing that you need inside because if you're not healed, you will not be able to let go. You have to heal the trauma bond. You have to heal yourself. Yourself. Nobody is responsible for, for this. You have to get the counseling. You have to get friends that are going to be real with you and honest with you and help you to connect your feelings to your truth. Because if you're connecting to a narcissist person, it isn't simply the fact that you are not completely validating within. You're going externally for third-party validation or for, you know, somebody else to validate you. And so you've got to bring it in. Close the door. You know, you're in a castle. Close the door to your castle. Do not let anybody near you that are, are narcissists. They cannot come near you because they will take from you. And take that time to heal and heal and heal and get to know yourself and um, do the frozen feelings. I have a... a really good article on my blog, selfloveyou.blogspot, about healing your frozen feelings. And I need to do a video on that because you've got to heal those frozen feelings because it's that jumble of, you know, maladaption, that abuse, those wounds that cause you to be attracted to people that are harmful to you. And you have to heal that. And the only way to do that is by going no contact. Because how can you possibly heal if you have someone who is harming you? You cannot. Um, you just can't do it. It's it's uh, Pathological people are attracted to people who have already been abused and wounded that they can control and use and exploit. So if you are someone who is unable to let go of an abusive person and who's trauma bonded, then you are going to be prey and you're not going to be able to say no, and you're going to let this person come back into your life and re-traumatize you over and over again, unless you shut the door completely. And you have to really shut yourself down and say, I am worthy. I am worth it. I deserve more. There's more out there for me. I know I'm a beautiful person, and I know that I deserve to be loved, and I will no longer allow this person to come and wreak havoc upon my life because I'm just too good for this. And you have to just say that. You have to know that. And then you have to journal and spend time loving yourself, 
doing things for yourself and reminding yourself of your beauty and reminding yourself that you're worth more. And then begin to foster relationships that are more healthy and begin to set boundaries. So with a narcissist, you want to set a wall. If you have to deal with a narcissist, that's a totally different situation. You would go low contact or gray rock. But if you want to stay no contact, then you really need to work on your inner healing. You need to get your feelings connected properly within your emotional self. You need to do your inner child work. You need to grow up inside so that you're no longer attracted to people that are abusing you, using you, triangulating you, using flying monkeys, pulling you into drama triangles, making you feel chaotic, taking you off your path. That's what you don't want in your life. You want to stay on your path and stay happy and stay joyful and keep getting better and better every single day. Okay, that's my video for today. I hope you liked it. Please leave me a comment. I really like your comments. I'm reading your comments. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, subscribe. And until next week, I'll talk to you soon.